and the hard work that we've engaged in over the last eight years and what it uh, has meant to have your support and uh, to be able to have the honor of representing you and continue your, your good work. Your voice is so important and your perspective is so important. And I don't think for a minute that uh, numbers should count. It should really be about the passion and commitment. Martel, thank you. Martel, thank you very much for stepping up and being a West Coast representative. Uh, there are not a lot of us, but it is having a strong voice and a strong presence uh, in a statewide conversation. So thank you so much for welcoming us tonight. It was such a beautiful dinner. And uh, keep up all the good work. And now that we live on this side of the Alps, and we are over at Crest of you, we do hope you all will stop by and, and we will stop over here as we come to get all of our fruits and vegetables and bread <laughs> and our <laughs> foods, yes, <laughs> over, over the course of the, of the summer. But um, thank you again and thank you for being, letting us be honorary guests this evening. three or four times since she was elected, um, trying to talk her into uh, passing some legislation for my personal agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, Ray Scott has killed the bills every time she tried to put it forward. So, um, I am really looking forward to Carrie being uh, our senator. Uh, she is our senator in, in the work that she'll do for us. And I hope that uh, I'll be able to make this introduction many years to come. Carrie? Here, here. Oh, thank you. Hi everyone. Thank you for this beautiful corsage, first of all. I just love it. I love flowers. If I ever get around to getting a boyfriend and I ever get in a fight, they'll be able to fix anything by giving me flowers. <laughs> um, Thank you for having this event tonight and inviting us over. This is so nice to come over to Delta and see so many faces that I haven't seen since the campaign. So to those of you who were so deeply involved in the campaign for the seat for SD5, uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart. It was a remarkable race in so many ways. And it was a seat that, as the story has developed, and as more details have come out post-November 4th, it was the seat that the Republicans had checked off as theirs. They were confident that SD5 was going to move back into the R column with the Republican wave that we saw kind of across the board on November 4th. And we didn't let them get it. And we didn't let them get it because there were so many folks like you guys in this room that gave your time and your personal dollars and your energy and your opinions and your advice and everything and that all came together to allow us to keep this seat and continue the good work of the Democrats and to continue the good work that, that Gail Schwartz had done. So just a huge, deep appreciation for me to all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but I hope that just the campaign stop, that you guys don't stop being involved with my role down in Denver. One of the most powerful things when I'm at a committee or on the floor of the well is to be able to start a statement off, I heard from someone in Delta that. I heard from a gentleman in Paonia. I heard from a woman in Hotchkiss. So all your stories, personal agenda or not, make um, the testimony that we give down at the Capitol so much more powerful. So please 
keep emailing me, call me, don't hesitate. And if it's to promote your personal agenda, that's even better because it's uh, well, that much more passion. <laughs> so um, call me, we're halfway through the session, we have halfway more to go, and it's only gonna truck upwards from here with the amount of bills that are coming through in a day, so don't hesitate to grab me or call me at any time, because after all, I work for you, and my job is to be your voice down at the Capitol, and it's an absolute honor to be the voice of SD5 down at the Capitol, and thank you, because without you guys, I wouldn't be able to be that voice. Thanks. right there in the uh, top. such a fabulous friend and an advocate. So I'm really lucky, David, to have you in my life. I really appreciate it. I can actually go around the room and say that to so many people uh, that are here today. Genevieve, congratulations to you running for the school board. That's just absolutely incredible. It's been such an honor for me to work with great people like Gail Schwartz. I'm so glad that we gave her the honor. She so well deserves here today. She was actually supposed to be your keynote speaker. <laughs> And now that she, it turns out she could be here, Gail, do you want to do a speech? <laughs> <laughs> and I can't tell you, Carrie Donovan is doing such an amazing job. She's such a beautiful young woman, and I hear nothing but positive feedback from her colleagues in the Senate. So uh, I hope that you all know how lucky we are 
to have Carrie Donovan. Amen. Yes. So I too thank you for the dinner, the beautiful corsage, and just making me feel so welcome every time I come to Delta County. Um, Aaron, your fabulous words. Earlier today, we host Carrie and I hosted a town meeting at the beautiful Wise Heart Springs Inn in Paonia, and Aaron graciously hosted us there. Many of you were there. We had over 40 people on a gorgeous day, and I figure, you know, you host a, a meeting like that in a beautiful, peaceful place, and people will rise to the occasion. Um, fortunately, the only person who took the heat was the director of uh, natural resources, Mike King. <laughs> so that was really very strategic on our part. And now Mike King, <laughs> here are all your concerns about oil and gas development in this part of Colorado. I, I thought he did a pretty good job. You know, I know it's a delicate thing. We, we want to, to support the industry. We don't want it here. Uh, but we definitely uh, have an interest in making this work. So anyway, um, yeah, I have been so busy. I'm on the budget committee. And we have, right now are trying to finish putting together the budget for the entire state of Colorado. Next year, I'm going to be the chair of the budget committee. Oh, so I'm wow. trying to yeah. <laughs> Quite honestly, I don't know how this happened. It's been my life story. It's like, well, yeah, I think I can do that. Well, that sounds interesting. Can I get this one more degree and then another door opens? I don't know. I just have a, I'm supposed to be retired, right? This is not exactly the retirement gig. And then stepping up into the budget committee is uh, just way over the top. But on Monday, I believe that we're going to have a balanced budget for the state of Colorado with bipartisan support that we can hand over to Carrie in the Senate to mess up, right? <laughs> And then, you're welcome. yes, yes, I'm counting on it. And then after that work is done, they'll come back to the house and they'll mess it up and then we'll have to fix everything, patch it back together. Hopefully the governor will sign it. <laughs> but anyway, it's been quite the experience working through all of that. So being so busy, and, and I also need to apologize. Some of you today have said, well, gosh, I emailed you or I, I called you and you haven't quite gotten back to me yet. Um, for that, I truly am apologetic. I, I have to tell you, we have so little staff and so little help when we're at the Capitol, and uh, we're in meetings constantly. We're running to a committee meeting to present a bill. Some of you came all the way down to Denver for the Cottage Foods bill. Again, this session, um, you see how crazy things are going on down there, and then when the emails and phone calls come in, it's kind of hard to stay on top of it all. Um, and not to mention, we have 20-year-old aides who make, 20, uh, make $11 an hour trying to help juggle all of this for us. So if you haven't heard back from me, don't despair. Um, contact me here tonight or email me or take my card or you know, we'll get back on top of it. I just want to say that. So meanwhile, I had to tell my 20-year-old $11 an hour uh, aide to say I also need a speech because um, I'm working with the Tulsa County Dems on Saturday night. And when do I have time to write a speech? I said, I want something that tells the difference between what's happening with the Republican and Democratic agenda, give some examples, then show how we do work together, and then inspire everybody before they leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we sort of fell short, but I'm going to give it to the next year. <laughs> Um, but I do want to start by thanking um, all the fabulous people, people here in Delta. We've had a leadership team here with the Delta Dems with um, Gretchen Nikoloff and Genevieve and Ramona Hill and Ann Every, who's been a dear friend ever since I started coming to Delta. And we have a new leadership team here with the fabulous leadership of Jean Tucker and Jim Briscoe, Sarah Jacobson, Ramona Hill, and Ann Every. Let's give them all a hand. Too. that they are doing a fabulous job. And um, I'm really excited to continue working with all of you on legislation and policies that not only move Colorado forward, but that support these fabulous Democrats and all the people in Delta County. So here I am in my third term, my fifth year. Um, my first two years in the House, I served in the minority party. Um, my second two years, uh, I served in the majority party. And this year, I'm back in the majority party. And each year, the Senate has, the, the dynamic has been different, is what I'm trying to say. 
So my first year, the Democrats in the House were in the minority, but we had the Democrat control of the majority in the Senate. So the dynamic of that is that if bad legislation comes out of one party, the other party can fix it and make everything good, right? So this year, we have a flipped uh, situation where we um, have the Democrat majority in the House and the Republican majority in the Senate. So very goofy things can come out of the Senate and we can fix it pretty immediately in the House, right? And I'll give some examples and I bet everybody can you know, come up with another example. Uh, but the situation that I fear the most because of some of the extreme agendas that we see from some of the Republicans, quite honestly, is what happens if we lose the majority in the House and the Senate? All right, so we have to always just continue to pay attention, stay alert, and continue to do the work that you're doing right here in Delta County, even if your votes aren't going to necessarily cause us, you know, Carrie and me, to have the most number of votes. Your votes matter significantly in the overall picture and the big picture of Colorado. So one way to think about it is, you know, we look at different agendas, we can think of a Venn diagram. So we've got a Democrat agenda here, Republican agenda. What I'm noticing is there's a lot of overlap. But on either side, there can be some extremes, right? And so some of the things that we've already seen that have been coming forward from our Republican friends are efforts to undo things that we uh, have really started to move forward on in Colorado. Just at my table, we were talking about every year um, an effort comes up to change the way the Public Employees Retirement Association works, the PARA funding, every year. And uh, Gail, I bet every year that you were in the Senate, somebody had an agenda to change the way PARA works. Um, there have been bills introduced in the Senate to take us backwards from some of that extreme Republican agenda. Uh, Carrie can probably tell the stories um, in a better way than I can, but we have seen bills that are trying to um, redefine uh, abortion, uh, planned parenthood opportunities. Um, we're looking at undoing progress we've made with some of the gun safety legislation. And fortunately, we can do the check and balance in the House. And, you know, on the other side of all of this, we see the Democrats trying really hard to move forward with policies that move Colorado forward. We see efforts on the part of Democrats that are passing with bipartisan support to expand training and educational opportunities for Coloradans to build the skills they need to find good jobs. We're seeing efforts that are successful to increase access to early childhood education by expanding the Colorado preschool program. We're seeing efforts to expand the successful family planning program that helps women and their families make important decisions about when to have a child and to reduce unplanned teen pregnancies. So I mention these kind of agendas because you can see as we work together and move forward as Democrats with thoughtful legislation, we're doing that also in the context of having to fend off some um, pretty extreme kinds of legislation that will work to uh, continue to move Colorado backwards. I've been um, fortunate being able to pass legislation successfully, first of all, because I listen to what's important to you, and I carry bills like with Senator Schwartz, and I worked on in my first year with the Cottage Foods Act. Senator Schwartz reached out to me and, and asked me to help her introduce that legislation that she carried that year. And then the next year we worked together to fix some of the problems that resulted with how we implemented it. And then this year, I'm working with Senator Donovan to expand the cottage foods industry. And to do that, we're working with um, the other representative from Delta County, Eulen Willett, who has stepped up to be a good partner with us in that effort. And so right now we're working on expanding the program to include pickled products. So, um, and we're running into more problems than we thought we would with pickles, because <laughs> if, if apparently, as you probably know this better than I do, if you don't pickle properly, <laughs> then we can run into some serious health issues. So, and so we need to you know, really pay attention to those pickled products, so that um, you know, we need a little more attention being paid to those products. So rather than just say, hey, local health, 
people now step up and, and oversee this, this production, we have to put some dollars to the program. So anytime now we fight over dollars, we run into other issues. But I think we're going to prevail and get that pickled thing to work. And <laughs> speaking of pickles, we're in a pickle with our state budget right now. I told you I'm working hard. Um, there are three Republicans and three Democrats on the budget committee. And that has to do with the Senate um, losing the Democratic majority. Uh, so we have three and three. And for any decision to pass, you have to have a majority vote. So of the six people, for something to pass, we have to have a four-two vote. What is that noise? <laughs> anyway, um, so we're in, a, we're in a pickle with the budget because of a couple things. Uh, the largest issue being TABOR. That's the Taxpayer Bill of Rights that Colorado loves and no other state has. And what that means is um, we have, because our economy is turning around and we're starting to bring in additional revenues, we've reached what's called the TABOR cap. And that means that we're not allowed to spend any more of the revenue coming in. We instead have to set aside money to do refunds to the Colorado taxpayers. So at a time when we have growing needs for transportation projects and for public education, and um, you know, everybody can probably give a, a suggestion of something we should be doing more of in the state, we're going to be setting aside millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars to issue tax refunds to Colorados. So we've got some issues ahead of us, and I'm uh, really looking forward to trying to figure out some of these solutions together. So thinking specifically about Delta County, I have some questions. Is it possible to get a majority of the Delta County voters to elect a Democratic candidate? <laughs> that was my first question. OK, I guess I got the answer to that. <laughs> Maybe not, but you still have a Democratic Senator, and you have a Democratic House of Representatives. Yeah. And together, we can grow support in Delta County. I know we can. I know that there are more people who are like-minded with you about the work that needs to happen to support the Delta County economy, to support the Delta County schools, to support the Delta County roads, and to make smart environmental choices about oil and gas development. And I think the best Democratic supporters I found in my campaign, and I've campaigned twice now um, uh, for this position, it, they are right here. Right here in this room are the best Democratic supporters I have found in my campaigning. And so I need you. No, isn't that true? Part. Okay, so I need you to work with Carrie and with me to quadruple the size of this room and to build our base. There's really too, there's too much at stake. Our democratic values and our priorities will move Colorado forward. We have too much at stake to move backwards. And I'm confident that we can work together. We can produce bipartisan legislation on issues related to education finance, to workforce development, to transportation infrastructure, and in balancing the budget. I'm excited to work with you and to take back our majority in the Senate. It, I will tell you, it's much easier to have a Democratic House and a Democratic Senate. Look at the work that we accomplished when we had that. Look at the work we accomplished, civil unions, and we can go down the whole list of how we work together. That's what it's for. So let's keep fighting to strengthen and expand our middle class, give every person in Colorado the opportunity to succeed and to ensure a better future for the next generation. We can do that together. Thank you.